February the 30th, and this is Frankie Flowers Live, where I'm here each and every week to help you go through the journey of gardening and just really talk about plants and growing, growing your own food indoors and also growing plants indoors as well and outdoors, of course, and everything that's beautiful. Because to me, beauty is the one thing that we all need a little bit more of in our lives. And there's nothing more beautiful than a plant. Yeah, than a plant. There you go. Beautiful. Uh, my anthurium is still doing well. Oh, this heavy. I think uh, I got to drain that out because sometimes when you put water in, the water will sit in the basin and sometimes will sit them and make them sit too wet for too long. So that's something that I have to do. Hey, for those that don't know who I am, my name is Frank Fergie, aka Frankie Flowers of City TV's Breakfast Television and City Line. You can see me each and every week, Monday through Friday on City TV. Yeah, I'm there telling you the weather. I always say I'm wild about weather, passionate about plants. Four time best selling garden author. My family has two garden centers, one in Barrie, one in Bradford, called Bradford Greenhouses Garden Gallery. We're greenhouse growers, and I also come from a family of agriculture farmers as well. Uh, many of my family grow everything from carrots, onions, and everything in between. So I have the 10,000 hours of child labor, let me tell you that. Uh, good morning from Niagara, Frankie uh, says, uh, Tammy, good morning to you. Uh, we got a good shout out there as well from Newmarket this morning too. There we go, a nice little hi there as well. Good morning to you. Uh, we got a good little hi there from Tim. There's uh, Niagara as well. I'm getting used to how these buttons work. Got to give a shout out to Matthew Amos. Matt, Matthew, hey there, buddy. Good morning. Star Kiss there is saying good morning to me as well. So um, I'm just going to put a little hi there. Boom. Uh, so a couple things. Uh, before I go into a lot of the people saying good morning as well, I have to uh, tell you a little bit about my experience this week. And my experience this week was that on Tuesday, I started having some cold-like symptoms. And on that day, I said to uh, the staff at BT that, hey, you know what? Let's just allow me to shoot from home today because things are just not feeling right. Even though I tested negative because we test every day on breakfast television, I didn't want to put uh, my camera person at risk or go to the greenhouse and put other people at risk. I'm going to put my mic over here too. There you go. I'm going to move my mic a little bit closer. So if you guys can hear me a little bit better, I'm new to this. Not really. Uh, so once again, uh, and then on Wednesday when I tested, I tested positive for COVID. I just, I don't want to make this about, uh, I just want to give people information. This is just information about how I experienced it to let people know I am triple vaxxed. I do have the booster as well. Uh, the best way for me to comparis make a comparison is it really felt like I almost had like strep throat. As a child, I often got strep throat. So I had two days that were a little bit of a struggle. Uh, I did BT each and every day from my kitchen. So if you watch, that was there. And really as of yesterday, I, I really turned a corner. Yesterday I hopped back on my bike, my cycle, my indoor cycle and did a ride, 20 minute, just low impact. I did another ride this morning already. So I'm starting to feel better. Uh, I still tested positive today. And uh, that there is a little bit of my journey. And uh, you know, I just wanna say that I went into this really super healthy. I went into this prepared and I'm really grateful that it just was a cold. And I know many other people out there have suffered this uh, so badly that they've lost family members. And from somebody who has lost a family member from a, tragical, a tragic um, illness, which was my brother, uh, I, my condolences and I, and I, I really, I'm really sorry. And I also wanna make a remark too, back in 1998, when my brother was diagnosed with Ewing sarcoma, Back in 1998, they said, hey, you have a really bad form of cancer, Tony. That's his name. Uh, but there's no hospital beds for you. Go home and we'll call you when there's a hospital bed. So in 1998, there wasn't hospital beds. And today, we're still having the same problem. Yeah, we have a pandemic. But our hospital system really, really needs to be looked at. Really does. Because in 1998, when there wasn't a pandemic, a boy who at the age of 22 didn't have a bed, <laughs> didn't have a bed. We got him a bed finally. And I'll, I won't tell you how we did, uh, but it took some work. Um, but here we are today in 2022 and we have some of the same problems and we're calling it COVID. Yeah, COVID has brought it to the forefront, but we really need to work on that. So I'm done with politics right now. Uh, let's talk to a little bit about what's going on in my world today. Good morning as well from Curtis this morning. Good morning from Coburg. Uh, Ashley Brown saying, good morning. Hope you're feeling better. Good morning from, here's another good morning out there too, from beautiful Bay of Quinty. Good morning to you guys too. Uh, hey, big shout out to Stony Creek this morning. We got them saying good morning as well. So a couple things. Let's talk about fun. Last night, I'm, I'm sitting here, well, over the weekend, I was like, 
hey, there's a lot of rabbit droppings in my backyard. There's a ton of rabbit droppings in my backyard. And I was like, Bentley, you're not doing your job. Bentley's my dog. And uh, last night I was sitting in my office, just kind of listening to some music, doing a little bit of work and just kind of working actually on the online garden course that we will be having coming up. And I looked in the backyard and there it was, the rabbit. And then I saw that that little rabbit, I had left over some kale because I wanted to see how long I could harvest kale this year. And I harvest it right into December. But that little rabbit actually hopped up because the snow was a little higher, was able to hop up on my troughs and was out there eating the kale. I'm grateful that I had the kale because it's not touching my cedars. It's not touching other plants. But right now, because there's not a lot of food sources out there, you're going to start to see that rabbits are going to be eating things like your prize plants. So take the time to go out in your property and inspect and see if those little rabbits are doing some damage. And if they are, you can use something called Animal Be Gone to discourage them. And there's other things that we can do. We can put chicken pens up as a barrier, but there's things that we can do to prevent that. But still, in the middle of winter, take the time to inspect your garden. I have to say that last night, that was probably my one half hour of real entertainment. I'm sick of it. I'm just bored of TV right now. Five days of being isolated. It was like this beautiful little thing that came up and said hello to me. So I was pretty excited about that. Uh, another thing i uh, really noticing on a lot of my indoor plants that I'm starting to see lots of new leaves develop. Daylight hours are getting longer and longer and plants are reacting to that. If you're starting to see new leaves develop in your indoor plants, I highly recommend you begin to fertilize. Uh, Water-soluble fertilizer is always the best. I always go to miracle Grow, and yes, I do work and, uh, and also I'm a spokesperson for miracle Grow, but I've had great success. It's been proven. I use it. I live the walk. I talk the talk. I talk the talk. I live the walk. There you go. So just a little reminder, best time to fertilize indoor plants, water them first. That'll actually open up the soil and then go and fertilize thereafter. And you only have to do that maybe once a month. If you're really somebody that wants a lot of growth, you do it twice, but once a month, once a month is good. A little update on the um, world of gardening that's out there. Greenhouse growers right now are really, really um, working hard. And uh, there has been some challenges in getting cuttings and things like that, just all due to supply chain issues that are going on out there, which you hear. Uh, Valentine's Day is coming up. And just a reminder that most roses for Valentine's Day actually come from uh, South America, Ecuador, Colombia. They then go into Miami. And then from Miami, they then are put throughout all of North America, well, Canada and the United States. So with the cost of trucking being so high, uh, and this has nothing to do with the convoy that's going on right now, but trucking is really expensive. And even before the convoy was really expensive. Uh, roses this year are probably going to be a little bit more costly. Uh, you know, a red rose at Valentine's Day, not the biggest fan of. Uh, and you know, you don't necessarily have to do roses. There are locally grown tulips that are absolutely fantastic. They don't last as long as a rose, a little less expensive, but you're supporting local. So just think about cut tulips or even potted tulips. And remember tulips are the only flower out there that needs lipstick, tulips. Bad dad joke. Um, and then also there's been a lot of uh, shows that have been happening already. There was a big show in the US that was a tropical plant show. I've seen lots of new varieties and new marketing and new pots and new things that happen there as well. So there is lots that you can be excited about for gardening 2022. Also, just to let you know, we're continuing to work on my website that hopefully will be launched right around the middle to end of March. And then at that time, I'm also gonna be launching what I call Grow University. Grow University will be where I have an online course. That first course will be growing food in troughs, so in small space, but also Grow University is gonna be a way that you guys can link to other sources that you can learn more about gardening. So. That's something that I'm working on right now. And uh, it's been cold and cold is okay. Cold is okay in winter. Let's go to some questions right now. Good morning as well. Uh, hi, Frank, hope, hope this works for you. It does work for you, which is the LinkedIn user. Uh, good morning from Toronto, says Nancy. Good morning from Aurora. Good morning from Holland Landing. We've got lots of good mornings out there. I'm wondering if anybody out there has any questions in terms of the world of gardening. Generally, I can actually go into a few questions right now and let's go into uh, talk about leaves. Okay. So, you know, I have my anthurium, which you guys see, I, I actually want to talk a little bit about this anthurium plant as well. So here's my anthurium. Actually, we can see that I have a spent flower. This guy here is just finishing off right there. Uh, these guys here are a little harder to, to pinch with your fingers. So I will later on need, and I want to do this right. 
there we go. I can actually pinch it. So I'm going to remove that, but I'm going to cut that off a little cleaner with a pair of scissors. But what I wanted to show with this anthurium is my window is that way. And so what you can see is the anthurium, of course, is really one-sided. You can see that really it's all growing one way. You can see which way the flowers are pushing and which way the leaves are facing as well. Plants will always grow towards the light. So when you're growing a plant indoors, you always want to, every week, rotate. And I've been lazy, you know, practice what I preach, don't do what I do, is what we say to our kids even. Uh, I should be rotating this all the time. But what's really neat as well is I have started to rotate. And you can see that I do have some new leaves that are coming out. And really, it's really key for you to go in and to always just take a little bit of time. This is kind of therapeutic for you too. Take some time and just clean off any of those dead leaves. Leaves, like this guy right here, boom. Leaves are an indicator of the health of the plant. And so we can take a look at leaves and see if there's any marking on the leaves, any signs of insects, any signs of, let's say, overwatering, underwatering, being by a draft, anything like that. So your leaves are your really your gateway. Like they say, our eyes are the gateway to our health. Your leaves are your gateway to the health of your plant. So this week, take a look at the leaves of your indoor plants, go up there and clean them up, give them a little bit of watering and just kind of see how they're doing, just to check in. It's kind of like us, check in on how we're doing. I hope you're doing well. Yeah, this has been 2022, like the 2020s, man, tough times. Uh, feel better, Frankie. Uh, that is from Karen in Richmond Hill. Thank you guys. I'm actually feeling better, guys. Sending you love. We still had uh, it November 10th, uh, 10 weeks ago and still coughing here and there. I know there's a lot of a lot of people are, that are having some uh, uh, difficulties as well. You know, I, I really, really, really just want everybody to be kind. Uh, that's the main thing that uh, I want everybody to do. This is, you know, the group of and community members we have here. This is all about kindness. We're all trying to help you guys grow. I'm all trying to get you to look forward to something. I'm also helping you motivate you to do things, but let's, let's just be kind to one another. Like, let's just reach out to people and say, Hey, you matter and not you care to me. And let's just be honest to each other. And let's just tell us, uh, honesty is always the best thing, but honesty with kindness and respect. Uh, I watch BT every day. It was, uh, I too was sick. Uh, there's lots of people out there, guys. Yeah. You know, for everybody out there that's gone through this, it was like two years that I hadn't had a cold. Well, it was actually three. And I was like, wow, I forget what it was like to have a cold. Hmm. I was really productive, by the way. I did a lot of, uh, a lot of work, but I'm a weirdo that way. Um, uh, here we go. China built, uh, here we go in terms of some of the different things that we're talking about that. Okay. Anybody with gardening questions? Oh, here we go. This is a great one right there from Andrew Sweeney. When can we start our seedlings? Great question. Uh, so it really depends on what you're growing. The key is if you are buying and purchasing seeds, take the time after you purchase, first off, before you go and buy purchase seeds, you know, don't go to a garden center or a home improvement store or go on a website and take a look at all these beautiful plants because you're just going to get caught up. And you're going to be like, oh, it's only $2. Oh, it's only $3. Oh, it's only $5. Oh, it's only $6. Next thing you know, it's like, oh, I spent 200 bucks. Really easy. You know, you want to go in there with a list of what you need, right? And what you need is based upon what requirements you have in your property or what you're needing. So what I mean by requirements is, if you only have shade, there's a lot of vegetable plants you can't grow because vegetables grow in sun. So really, we've got to write down that uh, these are the areas that I want to grow. This is the food I want to grow. Make sure that you have enough sun to support. You have access to water to support. And then after you do that, then you can go pick out your seeds. Now, with starting your seedlings, after you get your seeds, you're going to take a look at the back of the packs. And they're going to say start six to ten weeks before last frost date. Four to six weeks before last frost date. Direct so. So four to six weeks before last frost date, we go to our last frost date in our area. So for me, I'll just use myself as an example. I'm comfortable for Bradford around May 15th, May 20th. So let's just say May 20th to be a little bit more safer. It just seems like I've been really safe this time. And then we're going to count back four to six weeks on the calendar. And that's when is our sow date. So we're going to do that with all our seeds. And this is going to give us a seed starting calendar. It's going to give us a recipe guide for our seeds. A reminder, when you start seeds, they don't need light. So you can start seeds anywhere in your home. They need humidity, heat, and moisture. 
Once those seeds germinate and get to a three leaf stage, that's when we need to introduce light. So they either have to be in a bright room or have a grow light for them. So there you go with growing a little bit of seeds. There we go. Uh, good morning from beautiful Col Collingwood. Uh, oh, look at this. Jeanette Center PJs. I'm in my track pants. Yeah. True confession. Uh, good morning from Mount uh, St. Louis. Uh, I work long term for 38 years as an RPM in Toronto rehab for all those that work in our healthcare system. We need to be banging pots again for you guys because you guys have been, wow, it's just been crazy out there. Um, Athena and Serena are saying good morning to me as well. Uh, Peterborough, uh, here we go. Three days ago, we're still fighting around. A lot of people out there. Uh, okay, here we go with another garden question as well. Um, in mind, my lilac bush is almost stripped. The snow is so high that they can almost reach the top, but I do love my bunnies. So this is Carol talking a little bit about the bunnies. So if you're just joining us right now, I mentioned about some rabbits that I have in my backyard. And now that we have higher snow loads uh, and with higher snow loads, a lot of food sources for things like bunnies and mice and even deer food sources are diminishing. So you're going to notice that the bunnies and deer are eating up higher. Well, bunnies are eating higher because they can get on top of the snow and eat a little higher. So animal be gone is something that you can spray those plants with, and uh, that will discourage them from going in that area. It leaves what's called bitrix on them, which is a bad taste. You can also put a chicken wire around the area. Uh, for your lilac bushes that are stripped, you know, lilacs are pretty good. They usually kind of bounce back, but you know, these animals can eat so much that they can really, really cause harm. They can really cause harm over there. Um, boom, 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 boom. I'm just going to hit hide there. Uh, good morning from Tweed. Hey, here we go. Tweed this morning, minus 29. That's going to kill some gypsy moth. There you go. No mosquitoes in Tweed today. That's my 100% guarantee. Good morning from Cardinal, Ontario. Um, I, uh, it's this. This is, I still can't find my garden. Heather Fellows, your garden's underneath snow. There you go, guys. Uh, here we go. Another question for us this morning. Uh, I brought in two lovely palm trees in the fall. They're not doing too well. What would be the watering rule? So when it comes to palms, palms, uh, if we think about them, they actually have a fairly shallow root system. I don't know if you've ever been to um, a resort location or in the Caribbean and or the tropics, and you've seen somebody go to plant a palm. I mean, you look at the root ball and it has hardly very little root whatsoever. The reason why it doesn't have much of a root is actually its roots sit fairly close to the surface and it's really used to getting a light watering and then drying out a light watering and drying out. So the rule of thumb for palms is that they really do need to be dried out in between waterings and you can do more of a light watering versus a deep soaking on a palm. Palms inside your home can't be near a sliding glass door. If you're letting the dog out all the time near a front door, if you're going in and out anywhere where there's a draft, palms also shouldn't be closely located to any heat vents. If you have any vents that are out there, keep them away from vents. Palms sometimes will get uh, spider mite or even red spider. So you always want to check for some webbing, check on the stems and leaves, uh, and do the occasional spraying of an insecticidal soap like a Bug Be Gone to prevent that. Um, palms during the darkest days of winter, which we're already going through, uh, those palms themselves uh, sometimes we'll sit back and you'll see at that period of time that they don't look that well, but they should bounce back. Uh, if you are really worried about your palm, you can always email me a picture at Frankie. So it's my, my email address is Frankie at Frankieflowers.com. And that's with an IE. So thank you for that question, by the way. Uh, good morning from Brampton. Uh, my Christmas cactus has started flowering. So you're like, why does my Christmas cactus flower now? So it's called Christmas cactus because generally Christmas cactus, which is a forest variety of cactus. Let me just grab a little coffee here. Forest variety of cactus, they generally will bloom at Christmas. The reason why they bloom at Christmas is it's a plant which is called daylight sensitive plant. What that means is a plant will trigger itself into bloom based upon the amount of hours of daylight it receives. So with a Christmas cacti, they actually bloom when the days get shorter. And as soon as that daylight is shorter or restricted and under about eight hours of daylight, that's when the buds are set and that's when it will go into bloom. 
It also, with Christmas cactus, they need a cooler evening temperature. So there's some play with temperature that you really need to trigger them in. But the reason why your Christmas cacti is blooming now is just probably based upon how many times you're in that room turning lights on and even the temperature as well. But Christmas cacti can flower at any time of the year. We can actually, but we have to play with them. If they're just put in a room which has a natural window, they're going to bloom when they're uh, their daylight hours are cut down. That's when they're really naturally going to happen. But as a greenhouse grower or as a grower, you can actually play with them. You could restrict the amount of light that they're receiving. You can shade them off. You can put them in a closet. You can basically trick that plant to bloom anytime. And that's why sometimes at Easter, you'll see what appears to be a Christmas cactus for sale. It's actually what's called an Easter cactus. It's the same cactus. The only difference is, is it's been tricked to bloom at that time of year. So there's a little bit of info for you. Uh, good morning. Uh, hope you're feeling better from Anne. I am, guys. I am actually feeling really good. Uh, here we go. Another question. Let's see if I can answer this one. Frankie, I'm looking to find the best beefsteak tomato seed. Can you lead me in the right direction? Please and thank you. This is from Rosemary. So beefsteak, there are probably the best, easiest to grow beefsteak tomato is beef master. Beef master is one that is uh, pretty resistant to fusarium wilt. Uh, and it's still a really nice, large tomato that still has really good flavor. So if you're looking for a good variety of a beefsteak tomato and a beefsteak tomato for those are like, well, what are you talking about? The reason why they call it a beefsteak tomato is the tomato grows so large that when you actually can cut a slice of it, it can fit over a steak or it can even become a steak. And I'll tell you, there is like a fresh tomato from the garden. You grill a steak and I'm not eating that much red meat. Not as much as I used to, I get funky dreams. Every time I eat red meat, I get like crazy dreams. Don't ask me why. Um, but I love it when you have a fresh tomato, a nice little slice of ooh, steak. Oh, it's so good. So good. So beef master. Um, I'm looking, blah, blah, blah. That same question. Uh, here we go. Uh, Frank, here we go. Another question about Christmas cacti. Uh, this is from Sandra. Uh, when should you repot a Christmas cactus? Uh, so they like to be pot bound. And so Christmas cacti always like to have tight shoes. And so often the only time that we need to repot a Christmas cacti is as soon as that plant's appearing to look a little bit like it's struggling or weaker, or it looks like there's, even when you go to the pot, it looks like it's just totally jammed in there and totally full. You only want to go one pot size up. That can be every other year. Uh, it depends on the size of the plant, size of the pot. And once the plants get to a fairly large size, it could be once every like three to four years that you're going to be repotting. You don't want to put it in too big of a pot. So let's say, say that we have a, a smaller pot. It's going to fill that area quicker. So it's going to be a faster potting time to the next size up. But if we're in a six, the next pot size up, I would recommend is an eight or a 10. And then once we get to a 10, it's going to be a little bit longer for it to actually get root bound. But when we get to a 10 inch pot, we're going to go either to a 12 or 14, but we're never going to go anything too much bigger because what'll happen is it'll drown in that. So there you go. Uh, here we go. We, I think we already answered this question here. Indoors leaves are browning. So Louisa, we already answered about palms if you just want to go a little bit back, but uh, generally if the leaves are browning, your leaves are an indicator of stress. So browning leaf uh, on any plant, a browning leaf can indicate too much water, too little water, a change in environment, either uh, right now because it has been really cold. The other thing that's going to be triggering and affecting our plants is that we've had our heaters on a lot more. We've had uh, fireplaces on and things, and that pulls moisture from the air. So we have a lot less humidity. So a palm really likes, it likes to be dry in terms of its bottom, its roots. Uh, so water only allow it to dry in between waters, but it also likes to have good humidity around it. So the occasional misting. So you can always send a picture, Frankie, with an IE at frankieflowers.com. Uh, hello from Bancroft. Okay, we already did that one. Uh, Calanchelo, here we go. Another question. Calanchelo and Dianthus, which are carnations, of course, are great pot of plants options for Valentine's Day. Tanya, there he is. She is. Yeah, indeed. Uh, Calanchelos are great. Uh, Tanya, thanks for that as well. Uh, there are some beautiful new Dianthus varieties that you're going to be seeing. Uh, these guys here were actually um, developed in Europe. Their Dianthus is a potted Dianthus. is a fantastic little plant that's long lasting. There's some with some great fragrance as well. You're going to see these hitting 
uh, probably this week and next, uh, you'll see them everything, everywhere. You'll see them at your grocery store. You'll see them at your home improvement store. You'll see them at your garden center. And they are a great little happy plant. Calantulos, I actually have one in my home right now that I've been just, you know, it's been a long bloom period. Great plant, really easy to grow, really easy to care for. And those are two great recommendations. Happy Sunday to you as well, Tanya. Uh, here's another question too. Well, maybe a comment. Uh, roses die too soon before they open up. I like wildflowers, carnation, they last longer. So if you do ever get roses, guys, here's a little bit of some tips. Okay, if you get a nice bouquet of roses, anybody gives you flowers, just be happy, okay? The gift of flowers is the gift of joy because it's the gift of beauty. To me, love fresh flowers, like love. Uh, if you get fresh cut roses, first thing that you want to do, and let's say that you get them and they're not really opening and they're looking a little funky, you can actually uh, take them, you're going to cut the ends and then you're going to put them in warm water. Okay. And you're going to put them in warm water because that warm water will actually perk them up and wake them up. As a matter of fact, if they look really bad, if they look really kind of not hot water, but if they look a little bit droopy, you can actually fill your bath up, take those cut roses, cut the stems and just have them sit, lie in that nice warm bath water for about half an hour. Okay. Then you can pull them out put them right into some nice water and that water can be room temperature, put the packets in and you'll see that rose. As long as that rose, remember roses indoors and even cut any cut flower. If it's in a warm, sunny room, they're going to go through their cycle. They're going to actually not last as long. If they're in a room that's a little bit more shaded and a little cooler, they're going to last longer for you. So there you go. Uh, so that is some uh, little points for you, little tips. Okay. Um, I'm just going to, you know, give me a, myself a little bit of a plug. This is Rochera. You're a breath of fresh air today. As I always take a break from removing wallpaper, enjoy your tips. Stay well. Oh, removing wallpaper. I did that last year at this time too uh, in the house that I'm in right now. I got my my cousin. See, if you're hearing all these like little beeps, beep, 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 there are text messages from family members and cousins and everybody, in which my cousin Carlo uh, just checking in, just seeing how I'm doing. Uh, and also I'm really grateful that I have so many family and friends like, Hey, do you need anything? Can I bring anything for you? Uh, you know, when you're not feeling well is when you actually can feel the love of a lot of people that are out there. Uh, good morning from Brampton. Uh, C Dollarama has their garden section set up. There's some great finds there. You know, you can do some really good things and you know, you gotta be smart with your money, but there are some differences. You know, if you look at bird seed, uh, and if you're looking at the cost of bird seed, always look at the percentage of filler that's in there. If you're looking at soil, not all soil is created equal. So you're going to be like, well, this bag of potting soil is so inexpensive. But if you look at what that bag of potting soil is made up of and the quality of the soil, you know, investing in the foundation of a plant, which is its soil, where its roots reside, those roots are where it breathes, where it gets nutrients, where it gets water. Let's make sure that we put them in a good foundation and put them in good soil. So I would spend and invest in soil, uh, you know, but if it comes to plastic pots, if it comes to tags, if it comes to accessories, you know, go for it. Seeds. If you want to test seed viability, uh, you can do that by floating seeds, by soaking and floating them. Uh, you also, when you're purchasing seeds, many seed packs will actually show you the germination rate. So if a German rate germination, if you see a seed that let's say that, let's just say that we have peppers and I'm just throwing a dart in the air here just to give an example. But if we had peppers and we have two packs of seeds, we look at the seed count, seed counts are the same, but we look at the one pack of seed and it has a germination, 60% germination rate. <coughs> and the other has a 90, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> still lingering on there a little bit. Um, and the other has a 90% germination rate. The reason why that seed is more expensive is because that germination rate's higher. So you're going to have a greater success. That means that out of 10 plants, only six will germinate on that one pack. Out of 10 plants on the other pack, nine will germinate. Better on that 90% germ. Uh, germination rate, that, not germ. Got to be careful. How to get African violets to flower? <clears throat> so African violet's really key. African violets, when you're watering an African violet, you want to use a room temperature water, tempered water. Best thing to do is after you water your African violets, take a, a glass or a watering can, fill it up, 
and just put it to the side, let it stand. That means it'll be room temperature water and also some of the impurities and some of the different things that have been used in the water um, by municipalities can actually dissipate as it evaporates. Um, uh, African violets do also want to be watered uh, on the base. So when we water them, it's better off just to sink the pot in the water. And as soon as when we sink the pot in the water and we're holding it down and we're putting our fingers across so it doesn't pop out of the pot, we're holding it down. As soon as we don't see any bubbles anymore, that plant is watered. Um, finally, in order to get it to bloom, you do need to put some fertilizer that's on there. And there are many formulated African violet foods, but proper watering is key. Removing spent flowers is key, room temperature water. And over time, you'll be able to get that African violet to bloom with quite ease. So what do we got for time right now? Uh, I don't even know what time I'm at now. Uh, I'm going to answer a few more, and then I might even cut this a little bit short. Uh, here we go. Another great question. When do you prune apple trees? So when we're doing a pruning of apple trees, it's not only the when, it's the how. How to prune apple trees is we're removing any center branches, and we're really trying to open up that apple tree. And the reason why we're trying to open up that apple tree is to allow good airflow and good sunlight to go through. We usually want to do that in early winter, but we could do that right now. So if you wanted to do some pruning of your apple tree, you can go out and prune it while it's in dormancy. We always want to prune an apple tree. We can prune inward growing smaller branches any time of year, but if we're removing larger branches and doing a larger overall pruning, you want to do it while it's in dormancy. So you can still do it right now. So there you go. I'm going to answer uh, this question here. What do you think about winter sowing of seeds? Uh, it really depends on the seed itself. Uh, if, if you're new to gardening and you're somebody that's maybe wanting to venture in gardening for the first time, instead of sowing seeds indoors, what I really recommend for you to do is to do direct sow, which means that you're going to take seeds and sow them directly into vegetable gardens or flower gardens when we're a little bit closer to the last frost outdoors. So that's going to be mid to late April. And then also buy seedlings. And then just start to build your garden confidence up. If you want to start seeds indoors for the first time, there are several seeds that are super easy and they really don't need to be sown or started till much later. Like beans are super easy. Cucumbers are super easy. Any squash plants are super easy, bigger seeds. If you want to grow flowers for the first time, marigolds are really easy. If you want to venture in and start tomatoes, if you want to really get starting something in the next couple of weeks and you want to get a jump start on some tomatoes, start a few tomato seeds or pepper seeds indoors. Uh, make sure that you have a bright room and you'll get ahead of the game. <coughs> and we'll go through um, some of the things you can do. You can see once you get to like a half an hour of talking, you start to get dry throat. So guys, I'm going to end it right there. There's there's so many different questions that are out there. And you know, I just want to end everybody with one of the best things out there, which is from Gloria Black, which is happy Sunday to everybody. For all those that joined me today, I hope you guys had a fantastic uh, Sunday. Actually, we reached at about 32 minutes. My promise is always to be with you guys for 30. Um, I'm doing good. I'm getting better. Once again, my recommendation this week is just to be kind. Be kind. Get in some beauty. You know, if you're not feeling good, go buy yourself a nice bouquet of flowers. If somebody in your life is not feeling good, call them. Or if you really want to make them happy, send them a nice bouquet of tulips. And remember, at the end of the day, gardening is always better than therapy. And you guys know why. You guys exactly know why gardening is better than therapy. Because at the end of it, you feel good and you get tomatoes. Yeah, I like me my tomatoes.